What's good guys, B Sticks back again. We're here with an alternative R&B tutorial and this one's interesting because we've got some key modulation here. We've got some interesting sounds and textures. I'm gonna show you how to make everything. But first of all, I wanna just say, go cop this sample, it's totally free. And also grab one of my mini kits or two of my mini kits. And if you wanna support, grab the paid products, loads more samples in there. You've got bass MIDI, you've got stems, you've got everything. Follow me on Instagram, it's right here. And let's get into it. So I started to program this sample in A minor. I started with a minor 251. Basically what that means is, the A minor was my destination chord and I wanted to get to that chord by using two other chords that are related to it. It's a very common movement in R&B and jazz and I'm gonna do a whole lesson on two five ones. Essentially, I went from a B altered dominant chord to an E altered dominant chord to a minor chord, a minor seventh or minor ninth chord. And that sounded like this. But what I did was I put a simple top line melody just walking down from this D to this C to this B. Now, if you've seen my videos before, you know that I like to put a melody on all of my chords. So what happens is our ears naturally hear that top note and connect that with then whatever harmony we want to put underneath it. So I had this melody, bam, 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 really simple. And I could use quite a nice extended harmony underneath that to, to give it some weight. So the sound that I used for this was again, the sky keys, now I've been loving this plugin lately and this low water preset, which is really nice. It's got a little bit of this vibrato and this section here models the pedal that I've got, Fairfield Circuit, Shallow Waters. And we've also got some other things going on here, a little bit of verb, a little bit of filter. So if you've seen my videos before, you know that A minor shares the same notes as C major. And an interesting thing that you can do is that you can actually modulate from C major to C minor. Then as long as you resolve back to a chord in C major, you can get some really interesting outside sounds. And I wanted to try that on this sample, it's something I haven't done yet. What I did was, on bar four, I arpeggiated a G sharp major seventh chord. Take a listen to this. And then I actually programmed the G sharp major seventh chord right here. If I take my top line melody off again for these next three chords, I'll show you what I did, so. A really interesting harmonic movement to the progression um, and the melody, I just walked from the C, A sharp, to the A. If I play the whole passage together, you're gonna hear what that sounds like on its own. I resolved to this F major seventh here, which is back in the key of C major. So for, for a couple of bars, we go to C minor. So from bar four to bar six, we go to C minor. And then just before bar seven, we go to back to C major. That gives us really interesting harmonic movement in this, uh, in this sample and everything else then back that up. So processing wise on that main patch, I kept it very simple. I just put on the wow control from Good Hertz with a little bit of this shape here to give it a little bit of pitch drift and then an EQ and that was it. No compression, no other effects. I know you've seen me load up the effects before, but I just really loved the sound of it as it was. And obviously there's a couple of effects already on the preset. So what I did next was I took that MIDI and I just brought it down. I added a shaper box. I went to this preset in the glitch section called Divine Wiggle Worms and I turned off the drive and I was left with this. Some really interesting grains coming off of that, but it was far too much with the sample. So I bounced that out down to audio and I was left with this right here. What I decided to do, instead of shape of boxing, maybe side chaining it, the first of all I EQ'd it because I wanted to take a lot of that information away. Then I added a compressor. And what I did with this compressor was I side chained the compressor to the main synth. And what that did was every time the main synth played, it pulls down the sound, the texture sound. So when the synth is not playing, those little grains then come to the surface. That still allows space, but also 
lets us hear that textured sound pop out when the main synth is not playing. And I really enjoy doing that sometimes. You can do that with reverbs, you can do that with delays. I often do on the vocal delay. I'll sidechain the delay to the vocal itself and therefore it won't just be delaying the whole time. Da, 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 da. You're only going to get the delay when the vocal stops singing. So that's a good trick to try. So then I added a choir and I just copied the MIDI across. But then what I did was I changed some of the voicing. So I moved some of the notes around and I was left with this. <laughs> So nothing too exciting there, but I really liked how that sounded. I added some processing, reels, and EQ, filtered a lot away there. Added a phaser, some verb, and an imager to widen the signal, and I was left with this. So with our texture and our main synth. I then came to the bass. As always, I use my trusty Scarby Rickenbacker bass. And you can see here, not too many exciting things going on. I really just follow brute notes. There's a little walk up there, and at the end of the phrase, another walk up. And I think I just did a pentatonic walk up G, A, C, D, which is something that you'd commonly do on a guitar, on a bass, to mark the end of a phrase. So, if we just listen to the bass line with the parts we've got so far. Next thing I did was I went for the Logic Drummer track and I just put the percussionist on there. I wanted some, some rhythm to come in and I bounced that down. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. It sounded like this without any processing on it. If you know me, that's too boring. So I added an auto filter, uh, the spring reverb that I love, that I always put on. And a phaser. Gave us a really nice texture on that percussion. Brought in this sound from Monty Booker at the beginning of the sample, which is just called a maraca detuned harp. And you can hear this. Interesting. I added this Maraca beep again from Monty Booker, but what I did was I tuned it with Soundshifter to be a fifth in the scale of C major, so a G note. So that plays like this. Some vinyl crackle added to that. With our instruments in now. Really enjoyed how that sounded. I went to my blooper pedal and I just ran some of the sounds through it and came out with these really, really cool textures that it is hard to really get this kind of texture without a guitar pedal, but check this out. It sounds like kind of a waterfall or something, but it's obviously got a melodic content as well. And then Really, really love those sounds. And in the context of everything, we had this. So let's listen. And it's all about placement, where you're gonna put those textures to get maximum impact. And I thought they came in really nicely there. I also automated the volume on them so that they popped in and out and still left space for the other instruments because as I always say, you've got to have space because think about it, the producer's going to grab this, he's going to put drums on it, but there has to be space for vocals here still. And obviously when you use the stems, someone might just want to take this synth and just do, just do what they want with that. They may just want to cut little pieces out of it. So just about giving people options here, okay? Now this sample had an A and B section. In the B section, 
I copied some of the MIDI across. I used this Labs piano, which I thought was the main sound, the soft piano here. So if we just listen to that. I left the processing on and all we've got here is this portal and the time, time traveler preset, which is in the grain synthesis bundle. I believe it's eight haze is one. And that adds some reverse echoes to the sound really. And that sounds great there. So that was the main basis for the sound. I added our favorite Mo Growler bass, which is from Omnisphere. Sounds like this. That simple sawtooth bass that you've heard a million times. The choir, which I think I left the same. I may have changed a couple of voicings on there. I uh, put the vinyl crackle in as well. Some of those bloops back again and a different percussion sound. And again, this time I automated the blend on the reverb plugin to give some kind of variation. There's not, there's not too much going on here. Just goes up and down a little bit. Uh, draw some more in there. So again, simple, just a couple of layers there. And I added a little bit of arcade vocals that I just buried really low in the mix. I did originally put vocals here where, where the sample changes to C minor, but I decided to, that they were a bit too much. So I just wanted to keep that element of space, which I feel, as I said, I can't stress enough, really important. So I processed these with that auto filter again, and that just brings them in and out gives a really nice effect. A lot of EQ and just getting rid of a lot of mud, some limiting on there just to limit the volume. And some reverb in the mix. Really subtle, just offering something, a little layer there. You can tell there's a vocal, but you can't make out what they're saying. And it just adds to the whole uh, texture and ethereal ambient nature of the sample. And then my usual mastering chain with the sound shifter. And if I engage that, you'll see that we get that. We're back down to G minor. Thanks for watching. Go cut the sample and I'll catch you on the next video.